Hello, good morning everybody, Mrs Jones here. I've got another assembly for you this morning. And in fact, I've got my trusty helper, Gethin, who is going to help read the story with me. Now, I wonder, we are getting close to half term, aren't we? And some of us are feeling a bit run down, a bit grumpy. Can any of you empathise with this poor old grumpy cat here? Do you feel a bit like that? Or maybe you feel a bit like this. Don't want to get up. Don't want to do homeschool. Don't want to have to eat my vegetables. You know, it, we can all get in a few strops sometimes, can't we? Don't worry, grown-ups can also get stroppy too. Look at him. He gets a bit grumpy sometimes. Grumpy Trump. But now, today, I'm going to tell you about someone who I think is probably the biggest sulk in the whole of the Bible. I call him Sulky Joe. Okay, let's dive in and we'll read the story. It's Jonah and the Whale. God said to Jonah, go to Nineveh. Jo Jonah pretended not to hear God. That's right. He pretended not to hear because he got in a sulk. He didn't want to go to Nineveh. He didn't want to do what God asked him to do. Jonah ran away from God because he didn't want to do what God was asking. He knew the people of Nineveh were bad. That's right. Nineveh was a big city um, and they didn't get on. The Ninevites didn't really get on at all with Jonah's people, the Israelites. Uh, and they probably could have had started a big old fight with them. And this was the big thing. Jonah didn't think they really deserved to hear from God. So despite God asking him to go, he was like, no, nope, I'm not going to do it. And in fact, what he did was he went completely the opposite direction. Jonah ran to the sea and got on a boat that was going away from Nineveh. It was going completely the opposite direction to, I think, a place called Tarsus, something like that. Now, this boat was full of people who didn't believe in God. However, as they sailed on... Jonah fell sound asleep on the boat and God sent a storm. Now, the people in the boat, despite not following God, thought that something must have made God angry. They were afraid. The other people on the boat were scared and worried. They knew that something had made God angry. Now, Jonah, he could have said, it's my fault. Take us back to shore. I've got to go to Nineveh. But no, he was in such a sulk. He would rather die than go to Nineveh on God's mission. So he said to them, throw me overboard. Just let me drown in the sea. They woke Jonah up and threw him into the sea. Jonah was swallowed up by a huge fish. That's right. God was going to foil his plan. He wasn't going to let him get away with it by just drowning. He sent this big fish. And when he was in this stinky, sticky, smelly stomach of the fish, he was there for three days. And that gave him a bit of time to have a think about what really he was doing, what he should do. While Jonah was inside the fish, he said sorry to God and the fish spat Jonah out. <laughs> He vomited, the Bible tells us. The fish vomited him onto the beach. Can you imagine what a sight that must have been for the people of Nineveh? And actually, they probably paid more attention to him, didn't they? If he had just gone when God asked him to and walked into the city, they may not have paid any attention. They might even have just killed him. But who was this man being thrown up out of a fish? Well, perhaps the Ninevites thought we should listen to him. Jonah praised God and listened to him. Once again, God said to Jonah, go to Nineveh. This time, Jonah went and the people of Nineveh listened to him. They also said sorry to God. That's right. Jonah turned up and in with a very brief message said to them in just five words in Hebrew, in 40 days, Nineveh will be overturned. So he wasn't really full of joy or, or love or compassion for them. Uh, he didn't particularly like them. So he went and sat on the edge of the city to watch what would happen in 40 days time. Now, uh, it was quite hot out there. So he sits under this nice 
bush that grows up and gives him shade. And God had sent this plant to grow up and give him shade. So he was quite happy that day. But the next day, God sent a worm that destroyed the plant. Then Jonah was in serious meltdown territory. He had a massive strop with God. He was so angry that God was going to show compassion to the Nin Ninevites and he was going to save them rather than, you know, show, uh, destroy the city because of the, how wicked they had been. And then this nice shady plant had just gone and withered away and died. And he raged at God, proper tantrum. But God said to him, look, you are concerned about this plant that you've only had for a day. So think about how concerned and how much love I have for this city that and full of all these people. Now, I hope Jonah took this in. It doesn't actually tell us what he thought about God's lesson to him. But this was the key thing that God wanted to say was that he, despite how bad the Ninevites had been, they were still within reach of his love if they said sorry. Jonah didn't think it was fair, but it just goes to show how amazing God is that even the worst of the worst can be forgiven and brought back by God's love. So think about that today, how great God is, but also when you're feeling a little bit sulky and grumpy, just think all these things that God does for us and that we need, we should be grateful for all the little things that we have in life. Now, perhaps you could uh, draw a nice little picture of Jonah in the whale, do some, uh, do something with the Play-Doh or something, grow a little uh, bush and then chop it down the next day. Okay, everyone. Well, I hope you have a really great half term and I will see you again after half term.